Hey guys, welcome back. It's day nine of RPG A Day, and today we're going to talk about dice. And I am not one of those guys that is very into dice. You know, there are a lot of gamers uh, who who sort of collect their dice, and and I, I understand why. I mean, certainly in the early days of gaming culture, the unusual dice were one of those things that marked you out, right? That that you know, if you knew what they were and you know, you knew what they were called and what they were for, then that kind of identified you as a member of a particular subculture. Um, and so they became a kind of totemic thing. And uh, because um, they're one of the easiest things to collect, like uh, anybody can have a bunch of different dice, like they're expensive but not incredibly expensive, uh, you know, yours can be different from other people's, which makes it easy to tell who's or who's. Like, there are a lot of advantages to having kind of a big dice collection. And I have uh, a friend who has a big bowl on display in her house, this lovely wooden bowl, and in it just all kinds of different shiny colored dice. Um, and it's actually, like, you know, it's a nice little ornament for the house. Like, it looks really cool. Um, I'm not really one of those guys. For me, uh, though, I do have a... A sentimental attachment to some of my dice, not, not because of their appearance or because of their uh, sort of rarity or whatever, but because of their biographies. Um, you know, when I started studying archaeology, one of the things that was is really impressed on you is the importance in some cultures of an object's biography, particularly sort of before um, you know before mass production uh, really comes into play. Uh, objects are kind of unique, um, I mean, not unique, unique, but they have. Um, they're, they're, they're very varied, and, and gifts in some cultures are, are prized not so much because of what they are and what they're worth, but because of where they came from and the story that comes attached to them, right? I give you this, you know, hat, and it's not just a hat that I'm giving you, but a hat that was given to me by this guy, and it was made by that guy, and it came from this island or whatever. If you read the Icelandic sagas, one of the gifts that you can, one of the sort of ways of conferring status is to give you a gift of clothes, not new ones, but actually my second-hand clothes. Yeah, um, if I'm some high-status person like a king, and I give you the the cloak that I have worn, then in some ways I'm literally, my status is going to rub off on you. I'm going to give you this thing that was also mine, and it's going to kind of confer some of my own uh, reputation or respect or whatever. Not that I have any dice like that, but most of my dice that I value are dice that I value because of where they came from. Um, so let's get started. Now, this uh, this is a 34-sided die. I don't know who made it or anything like that. And I have probably had this die for at least 25 years. And, you know, maybe more like 26, 27. It was a gift. I, I believe a gift when I was in elementary school from my friend Jesse. It might be from my brother, I'm not sure. Uh, but it was certainly uh, something that I had quite early on. And when my brother and I, as you know, young gamers do, uh, wrote our own role-playing game, it had a lot of 34-sided die-based tables just because we had a 34-sided die and uh, we were excited about using it. And it's actually not a tremendously great die. Um, you know, it has a sort of tendency to keep rolling, the differences between the faces being very slight. Um, but uh, I've never run across anyone else who had one, and uh, and I'm quite fond of it just because of its its association with sort of my early gaming history. So that is my 34 sided die. Um, so again, I like this because of its uh, because of its history. Um, this is my go to D20. Um, it's kind of, I don't know where I got it or whatever. It's kind of dark blue and, and has gold uh, numbers. Um, I use this in, uh, this is actually the one that I, I like, not because of its history, but just for its functionality. I use it in games that are primarily based on a D20, so like a Hero Quest. This is sort of my Hero Quest die, but also in the D20 system. Um, and I just like it because it's big and it makes a satisfying clatter when it lands on the table. Uh, and because it's so large, it's easy to read from, uh, you know, from far away so the players can see it or whatever, right? Particularly in Hero Quest, where that really matters, you're comparing your score to the other person's. Uh, so this is a die that I like for convenience and kind of for its size and pleasing heft. Uh, this die is a uh, souvenir die. It's a souvenir D6 
from the Salute Wargaming Convention. Uh, the only Salute I've ever been to because it has a tendency to be on a day that coincides with something else. Like this year, it was when I was in America for my brother's wedding. I can hardly skip that. Uh, and a lot of the time, it, it clashes with a standing commitment I have on Saturdays. Yeah, whatever, but... I don't know, I just like souvenir dice. Um, you know, I, I like that this, this came in the bag, you know, that you get when you sign up for the convention, and uh, it's just a little a little D6 that says Salute and Warlords, which is the name of the, the club that runs it, South London Warlords. Um, but, you know, whatever, It's not. there's nothing particularly special about this die, except that I think it's cool that such a thing exists. Um, I have another souvenir D6 from Dragon Meat, the big um, uh, UK RPG convention, which is a bit weird since, uh, to my certain knowledge, I've never been to Dragon Meat, so I don't know what that's all about. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so this is my souvenir salute D6, and I, I like souvenir dice. I think that's cool. I think it's cool that I get a little memento of the con that is also a useful thing. You know, um, if I were playing Debellus Antiquitatis, which I not infrequently am, this, this is the only die I would need for the entire game. Um, I think I was given this in a LARP I was in. It's a souvenir D10 for something. It has a weird uh, symbol in place of the 10, and I constantly have to kind of flip it over to check whether it's a symbol for the 10 or the 1. I like it for the same reason that I like this guy, which is just that it's big, it's easy to read from a distance. You know, I play in a system that requires a... That, that's only a D10, so that's really convenient. Um... And I like this one, I think, kind of because I'm not sure where it's from. Like, this symbol must mean something. And if you know, leave a comment uh, and let me know. Uh, I, I was definitely... No, I have no idea. No idea. I probably got it at a LARP event. But other than that, I couldn't tell you. So if you know what that might be... Unfortunately, the light's not very good. But if you know what that might be, you tell me. Chances are you were at the same event. I mean, you can tell me. Anyhow. Okay, so those are the individual dice that I'm particularly attached to. You know, one because it's from when I was a kid, some because they're useful, and some because they remind me of cool things. Uh, similarly, this set, let me see if I can angle the light here to make them a little more visible. Uh, this, whoop. Sorry about that. Uh, this set of dice, this is a, you know, a perfectly normal... Uh, you know, it's got a percentile and a d6 and a d4, a d8, and a d12 and a d20. Sort of, you know, that, that would come in a little box. But this was a, a stocking stuffer Christmas present um, from the same person who has that beautiful dice display in her house. Um, you know, that year, sort of like she gave to the gamers on her gift list. Separate, you know, each each a different dice set, which I thought was a cool idea, like a very, like a, like a themed kind of thing, and, you know, I value these dice because I think they're a really thoughtful and generous gift, uh, and, uh, this is kind of my, this was my, um, my die set for a particular game that I ran online, so I would just, like, keep it next to my computer so that I would always have it there, uh, that game's not going on anymore, but, you know, I still hold on to these and I use them to run my D&D game and other things, so it's just neat, I like, I, I like these, you know, they're pretty, and also I like them because they were a gift and they remind me of, uh, you know, that person then of Christmas, and I think they're cool. So, um, yeah. So my last set have a slightly more mysterious history. Now, if you, uh, if you have read, um, any of my blog, you know that I'm kind of a, a bargain hunting person, and this initially came out from a long period of being, you know, very broke. But even though I'm no longer as broke, as I used to be, I still just really enjoy it. Like, I just find, you know, looking for things in charity shops or thrift shops to my American viewers or, uh, or yard sales or whatever, you, you know, or eBay. Uh, I just find that kind of bargain hunting very enjoyable. Um, and I was in a charity shop when I found this. Uh, they came in a little red bag, which I have since got rid of, but just a big pile of sort of like yellow, orange, and red dice, and it was in, you know, it was in a dice bag with a little tag on it that said RPG dice, and it was clearly somebody's dice bag. And I, you know, I felt sort of bad about it, like, I didn't like the idea that someone had chucked in the hobby and, 
you know, taking their dice bag to a charity shop. You know, maybe maybe they just replace them with all brand new, you know, state of the art dice, or you know, they kickstarted some dice set and they uh, and they and they brought it. But I think so very few gamers probably would get rid of their dice like that unless they were getting out all together. Which I think is a sad thing, right? I think if you if you liked something and you and you abandon it, that that's sad in a way. Even if it's you know you weren't enjoying it anymore. So somehow I I, I felt like I should buy them, kind of kind of just to keep them in service, right? Like a kind of Toy Story three kind of a thing, like where dice would be unhappy if they weren't being played with. Uh, I I have a tendency to humanize inanimate objects in that way and I often find myself buying old stuff in used bookstores or whatever just because I sort of feel like like it would be happier you know what I mean if it had a place to be rather than being in a in a shop I, I don't know that that's a very sentimental way of thinking and poss you know possibly the sign of me being crazy but that's definitely how I think about objects so so this set of dice which I keep and are sort of my like um for anybody to use dice in my uh, D and D game, that's where this set of dice came from. I, I saw them in a, in a charity shop, and I sort of felt like they would be happier and better put to use if someone were playing with them. And they, you know, I mean, they weren't very expensive, it being a charity shop, so I bought them, and they serve me now because I play a D and D game with a bunch of players in it, and it's handy to have a bunch of dice on the table so you know i get some use out of them like i didn't buy them for purely sentimental reasons but primarily sentimental reasons so i guess in fact i am one of those people about dice just that my dice sentiment manifests in a slightly different way from the usual kind of don't touch my dice sort of thing um i certainly feel that way about miniatures right like i i would routinely buy old miniatures even if i had no use for them you know, just because they sort of deserve to be painted and played with. Weird. Um, I guess I'm sentimental. Anyway, that's it for dice. Join me tomorrow uh, when we talk about, ooh, my favorite game fiction. Now, most game fiction is terrible. Some game fiction is perfectly all right and there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, but often that fiction is not very game-like. Uh... And then uh, some game fiction could only be game fiction and is excellent. And by some game fiction, that may mean just one book. And tomorrow, that's what I'm going to talk about. So if you want to find out what it is, tune in again as we discuss my favorite game fiction. Okay, until then, follow the RPG A Day hashtag. Go back and uh, check previous entries on my blog where I've discussed some of these topics already. Uh, and uh, let me know in the comments if you know what my weird die is. All right, see you guys later.